How's everybody doing today? Are there any updates, any news in the community regarding sanitation issues? I haven't heard anything from anyone um, since our last meeting up until a day or two ago regarding um, certain trash bins that are utilized within the Manhattan area and bringing that to uh, the local area in Brooklyn and our community there, which seems like a great idea because they're not able to be utilized for just dumping everyday uh, garbage. They can only fit small items, so and they look good. Um, so that's definitely a good idea that uh, was discussed recently. Um, was there anything else? Has anyone seen anything lately? No, but this, this is George Faith. I was just wondering if you had if you had an update regarding the compost. Um, the, um, the what they call it the little what they call the countertop for compost bin that we discussed a couple, a couple of meetings ago. And any update on uh, the what we we talked about uh, regarding the sanitation issues. Around here, the dirty spots, a couple of dirty spots in the area. I was wondering if you had any update on those. Well, the update or the um, information that I received from the sanitation department was that they were going to um, look into getting the NYPD to do a little task force and go out and start looking into ticketing and towing the vehicles. Um, during the street cleaning, and I haven't heard that they've implemented that, but that was the last thing that I was told. Um, are those issues still present? I was expecting to hear from you guys if that was still something you guys were seeing since the last time that they told me that. No, but uh, um, it, that's still happening, but... Uh... Actually, it's not. We don't. We don't want to bombard you with that every day. If, if you say we give you some info, information and then we expect an up, update in return, but uh, so specifically, I'm talking about the dumping that we talk about the Forty Second Street and uh, over there by Forty Fifth Street by the by the school. Um, uh, what was that? Uh, one fifty one? No, one one oh nine. And and also the one um, by, uh, over the by Parvet and Utica is just getting ridiculous again. Well, see now, um, when you guys relayed that information to me, I related to them, and they told me that they were going to address it, and I didn't hear that it was still an issue, and. So yeah, but we, yeah, but I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we didn't hear that they were, they were supposed to resolve it or, or, you know, so it's an ongoing issue. I don't, I don't even know if they even went there, quite frankly. See, what, what I would like, I mean, I don't mind you guys letting me know as frequently as the issue persists, you know, so I can harass them. You know, I want to know every day that the issue is present so I can address it with them every day. You know, um, so, yeah, please tell me. Please, please tell me. Every time that you guys tell me, I communicate that to them immediately. Uh, Ms. Martinez, how you doing? I haven't heard anything from you in a, in a little while. Honestly, I just go directly to the sanitation people because 
I, I see the same the same conditions exist that I told you about in the beginning, and they have not changed, and I don't think they're going to be changed. I mean, on Clarendon Road, there's hardly any street sweeping because we have a lot of stationary vehicles. No matter who you call, it doesn't matter. Sanitation does not do their job because in other communities, sanitation writes tickets. They're not, they don't have to wait for the precinct to do it. And for, uh, for people to move that move vehicles, there are vehicles there that should be moved. There's trailer homes all over the place and the streets are not clean. Um, in that little Clarendon Mall and 57th Street there, there's a um, there's a there's a business there that does not have a dumpster. And no matter how many times the sanitation police goes there, why aren't they made to have a dumpster? They have bag and all you need is one bag on the ground and everyone else will bring stuff from everywhere. So it's always a pile of garbage. But I don't I see the deterioration in the community. I see no improvement whatsoever. And to me, no one is doing anything. Well, so I'll tell you I'm a little tired of it. I understand where you're coming from, and you know, at the last meeting that we had, you know, I've got the sanitation people to come out there and to speak with us, and I spoke with them, and you know, during our last meeting, I said, based on the conversation that I had with them, I personally agree with you that, you know, between you guys communicating with me or communicating with them and myself communicating with them, you know, that can only go but so far, right? I mean, they don't have to listen to me. They don't have to listen to you. They can sit there and tell me the same thing that they tell you. And, I mean, I'm not some sort of, like, enforcement officer. I wish I was. Um, But during that last meeting that we had, you know, last month, I said that I think, you know, the most – significant thing that we could do that would make a difference is if we all got together and we went to their offices and caused them um, you know, put the time out of their day for them to have to now engage with us more formally. And I think that would be the most effective tool at this point. But when I brought it up, Nobody really did this. I thought we would hear back from you about a method, but we didn't hear anything else. And the thing that disturbs me the most about it is all those all those people that you want to approach, they go to where uh, they go up to Orange County to visit us. Mr. Lester, put your phone on mute. They go to other um, communities. They follow them up there, and they find out what their needs are, and they address them. It's on our community board does not pressure anybody to do anything. That's what I see. Because this wasn't always like this. Excuse me, Mr. Hill. And just to add on to Ms. Martinez. Since the leaves have been falling in the community, they don't pick up any leaves. They just come down the street and just keep going. And on Farragut Road, from Utica all the way down, there's no leaf picking up. Now they did pick up, they did clean up the cash basins because of the the storm that came, but they have not been they have not been sweeping. And if you drive in our community, you'll see a lot of leaves by the curbs. No one's cleaning up the leaves. And they also are coming late. So what are they cleaning? And even if you drove down and you see our community on the days that they clean, they're not cleaning. So I don't know what to say. If you put in a 311 ticket and say that they came late and then they closed out the ticket, what did they close? What did they resolve? Did they reprimand that sweeper? What was the res- what was the resolution? That was, those uh-huh. are my questions. So it's a big joke. So when are we going down to their offices? Give me a date, give me a time, and I'll make sure 
that I'm down there. But until we start to say that we're going to make a make an action. You see, now that's that's a, that's exactly what I would like to discuss. <laughs> I would like to discuss that. You know, I wanted initially to go back and forth with them and give them an opportunity and all that, as I explained in the past. But I also said after a certain point that something more is going to need to be done. Clearly, as you guys all see, this communication isn't going anywhere. It's going to take what it's going to take. And, you know, you talk about the other communities and how the other communities are treated differently and all that. It's because they get together and do just that. It's not because they call through on one and make complaints and tickets and they, you know, care to take care of those complaints. That's not why they do it. So it is going to take a more direct approach to get these things resolved. That's what it's going to take. Um, We've got a hand raised. Yes. At this is Hazel Martinez. At this point, other communities don't have to do what we have to do to get the nothing that we get. And I'm telling you, they don't have to. They don't even have to ask for it. Our community gets nothing. And first of all, some of the people in our community could use a little sprucing up themselves because if they was they put too much garbage on the street, they are garbage cans. You don't have to drop your stuff on the street. That is that's one thing, but the other thing is that the services we get are always deficient. There's definitely favoritism in this city, and there's and and now that the budget is being cut, how much less than zero will we have to endure? Well, you know, to respond to that, um, it may be at a point these days that they don't have to go down there every day, but. It wasn't always like that. In fact, I remember, you know, back in the 80s, I believe it was, the late 80s, where the Jewish community in Williamsburg, you know, they were burning fires and and flipping cars over. I mean, they were sending the message, you know, to the city of New York that, you know, they were going to be heard and they were going to be taken seriously. And they did those kinds of things. I'm not saying that's what we should do. But all I'm saying is, is that, there was a point in time when certain neighborhoods got together and did what they thought at the time was going to yield better results, and that's what they did. And because they and did they that, did not get arrested. Well, I'm not when suggesting we that we do that. I'm not suggesting that we do that. It was just an example, just to say that doing more than just filing complaints is what may be required. And once those steps are taken, then, you know, it it sends that message that, hey, listen, you know, if you guys start slacking off again, you're going to force us to come back again. You know, and and that's how it, it, you know, keeps them in line. But telling me what's out in the neighborhood, me telling them, them saying, okay, we're going to do something about it, and then they don't do something about it, that's as far as, we are going to be able to get doing things that way. So it is going to take more than that. It's going to take more than that. So I think that we should pick a date. I think that we should all get together. And I think that there's enough of us here to go to the offices that we need to go to, bring the evidence of the issues that are, you know, present every every day that we see them and bring it to them to do something about it and put them in a position to have to respond. Right now, they don't feel like they have to because they know, they don't think we're going to do that. Well, you know, um, government agencies basically only respond to negative press. They're not, they don't care about anything except negative press and everyone will jump into action. So that's an avenue that you need to explore because I don't know if you, I mean, cause we don't get too much of um, press around here. 
for quality of life issues. But that is something that they don't like. Well, that's true, too. And which is another reason why I would encourage everyone to document through pictures on their phones. Like, you know, I know you guys have had some, but some, like, for example, if we set a date for um, sometime the mid-month of January or something like that to go over there, for example, um, between now and then, we gather fresh evidence of the issues. And then we go there. And in that time, we can also look into seeing if it's possible to get some sort of press coverage because of the horrific nature of the evidence that we're able to collect. We get enough, we approach the media, we let them see what's going on, and maybe we'll get something out of it. But it's going to take a coordinated effort. It's going to take getting certain pieces in place in order for it to be the most effective. So if you guys really want to get this progress, get this stuff changed, this is what we're going to have to do. You know, I know it's a pain in the ass, you know, to say the least, to have to go through this and do this, but I don't see an alternative unless you guys can see one. Filing complaints apparently isn't working. Hi, this is Leonie Logan. Oh, sorry. Um, I, uh, this is Leonie Logan. I'm in agreement with Ms. Martinez in terms of the fact that we shouldn't have to go to their office to get stuff done. One of the things I know a um, year or so ago, there was a meeting that was done at uh, Meyer 11 by the precinct council. <coughs> Some of the elected mm -hmm. officers were there. And yep. one of the commitments that they were trying to do is that they would have a meeting where they would bring the agencies together in a meeting so that we could hash out what we were not having, what services we were not having. So far, that meeting hasn't materialized. We've put those elected officials in office and we need to get them to actually get the agencies into a room so that the community can attend those meetings and get the commitment that we need that things are going to change. We have a lip service sanitation department. I, on my block, I called the uh, community board and complained over a week ago because for three weeks in a row, sanitation did not sweep the right side of my block. And I'm wondering whether or not it's a different crew that comes down the block. We have no problems with getting the left side swept. The right side never gets swept. And so I'm wondering if you have one crew for the left, one crew for the right. But we're going to keep getting this lip service. We need to have them in a room. We need to have our elected officials. Sebastian, please put your phone on mute. Background noise. There we go. I'm sorry, you were saying? Oh, I'm finished. I, I've said my piece. I, I'm sick and tired of sanitation, and I am in agreement with M Martinez. We've both been on this committee for too long, and it's just been basically the same thing. It's the lip service sanitation um, that we have. Okay. So your thoughts are rather than go to sanitation to address with them in their face, we should get our elected officials to hold them accountable, right? Is that, the, that's what you're thinking. Get the elected officials to engineer a meeting with sanitation that the community can attend and that the community can air their grievances and get sanitation to agree to what's going to happen going forward after that meeting. Okay. Um... That's that's fine. I can make that call and see about getting that meeting put together. Um, you know, 
hopefully that, that that'll work. You know, I thought getting sanitation to our last meeting would have been enough to get something going, and apparently it wasn't. Um, but maybe, you know, our elected officials will have more of a impact than us. Um, yeah, you know, we we can give that a try and hope that one that that works. If that's what you all agree to, Mr. Hill. See what happens is that we've been through this before. Yeah. And we know exactly what the end game is going to be. And we need senior people to attend the meeting, not the lower level people. We need the ones at Garage 17 who make the decisions and their senior people to be there. We need accountability. And we uh, it seems that the people at Garage 17 has a very big, um, how can you put it? They turn over very quickly. They, every time you turn around, there's a new crew. So crew A rotates very quickly. So they're only there for like maybe six weeks and then they rotate again. So crew A doesn't tell crew B what they did and what changed. And so now you get all the things that were put in place for crew A that you resolved the problem with doesn't transition over to crew B. And once you resolve the, the problems with crew B, crew B doesn't transition it to crew C. And then you keep going around and around in the circle and you keep having the same problems over and over again. So this is why we're frustrated. That's one of the problems. Yeah, I understand. The other problem is the fact that the elected officials we have are pretty much useless in my opinion because they don't give the same attention to our issues even though they want our vote as they do to the other parts of the communities that they also represent i've seen them they will i mean they are very hop very quickly to take care of what other communities want but when it comes over here there's nothing doing and i yeah. don't really hold out much hope for them doing anything here because I don't want something where people stand up and talk at me and they're not really listening to our issues or hearing what we have to say because when they even have those town hall type of things they're not really productive oh and just to let you know 17 garage 17 and 18 share the same building and okay. that's district 45 And there's a tale of two cities. You know, I want so bad to make this stuff change, you know, and I'm going to try to do as what's being suggested here to try to put that meeting together. You know, reach out to the people that. We need to talk to just like I reached out to sanitation the last time and hopefully, you know, this meeting of the minds will make the difference this time around. Um, you know, but I do want to just emphasize this point that, you know, my opinion of our elected officials is, you know, basically just like some of the opinions I've heard tonight that, you know, they're really just there for an agenda. You know, they're not there to actually take care of everyone, you know. And whether we all get together and we go down to whoever's office or not, I think it is going to take a showing of strength with the community coming together, whether it's on paper with names, petitioning to remove elect, that elected official, you know, or to go to their office and show a change. You know, it shouldn't have to come to that. I get that. But I think that if it did 
come to that, that that would be the most significant attention grabber that we could possibly have where we make them understand that their positions are in jeopardy. And I don't believe that they think that way or that they feel that way because I don't think that they believe we're capable of coming together in that way. So I'm going to keep pushing this idea while um, going down the path that you all suggest and hopefully, you know, doing that will be enough. You know, I was hopeful when I had the sanitation guy come out to the meeting, but, you know, we saw where that went. Um, I'm going to be on the phone as of tomorrow trying to get this taken care of, trying to get this meeting together. And, you know, I will let you all know at the meeting this Wednesday what I'm told and what what they're suggesting. Um, Um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that, first of all, um, that man you had come to the the board meeting, most of those people are not on this committee. So he should have really have come to this committee. And so, because coming to the board meeting, you know, it's just just useless, a two-minute conversation about nothing. And the other thing is that, really, if I'm leaving my house to go someplace to complain, it needs to be the commissioner's office. Because I'm not going to listen to no non-decision maker. Well, if that's the case, then that's that's the case. Um, If that's where, you know, we need to go, then that's where we go. Um, You know, so anything is on the table. And I think that if, in fact, you know, we do something like that and it is fruitful, it will motivate more showings of strength in other areas. I think it will have a domino effect if if it works, you know, and I think that it will make us stronger because it's going to give us that insight to what we can do when we really come together. So, as I said, I will make these calls, and I will try to get it done this way, and I'm going to, you know, emphasize the fact that we are considering coming together and going to the commissioner's office in the near future if we can't get this meeting. You know, that's how I'm going to address it. Um, But I would just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Hill, go ahead. No, no, good. Um, This is Leonie Logan again. I think we need to start with, uh, as a suggestion, a letter from the community board and community board letterhead going to our elected officials, Farah Lewis, Monique Chandler Waterman, Kevin Parker, and anybody else that has a piece of our district saying that we in the community, the community residents are fed up with the service that we have been getting from sanitation over the years and it's escalated into being nothing. We are asking our elected officials to jointly send a notice to sanitation requesting a meeting so that we can air out these differences between sanitation and community residents. Okay. Can I just pipe in with the commissioner? Yep. With the commissioner, not with sanitation, with the commissioner. Because that's the way you're going to get the respect. And then then she'll send whoever she feels, if she's not coming, someone senior. All right, so I'm going to reach out to our elected officials. I'm going to speak with the other 
committee, um, executive committee board members, chairs, and um, talk to them about putting that together because they have to agree for that to happen. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, and once they do, uh, we'll get it done, and I'll get it sent out, and I will let you know what the response is. And I they have I, to I agree to this. I've never known that before. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I can just take it upon myself to put a letterhead together with. I mean, look, I, I don't know. Maybe when I speak to them, they'll say, hey, listen, I don't have to ask them for that. But I was under the impression that I did if I was going to do something fair. like that. Sorry? That's fair. Yeah, so I'm just going to, you know, run it by them. And, you know, this is the first time that I'm going to do something like that and take it from there. Maybe I don't have to, as I said, do this in the first place. And I'll find that out when I make that request. And take it from there. But I'm sure it'll get done. I'm sure it won't be any opposition to it. Okay, sounds good. I'm sure the executive um, people too live in, in environments that are experiencing the same problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I don't see why it would be an issue. I don't see why it would be. Um, Ms. Leone? Yes? Hi. Um, regarding Ms. Leone's complaint, I submitted the complaint. They were supposed to monitor her block, but I've been out. I've been out sick myself. Uh, my children have been out sick, so I've been, like, in and out. All last week, I wasn't in the office, so I'm not They may have sent me something. I just thought it, I don't see anything today. But I can send you the name of the um, person that I spoke with who claimed that they will be monitoring her block to see that that side is uh, that that side is being clean. So I can let you know by tomorrow. I should be back in the office tomorrow. Okay. All right. I hope you guys are feeling better. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we have a hand up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Miss Robinson yeah, I, speaking. I, I am still trying to figure. Yes. Um, I think the best bet is to have a meeting, have the commissioner uh, of sanitation meet with us and discuss the problems with her. This going through elected officials, we're going to end up again with lip service. I feel we've got to start at the top and get answers. This going through elected officials, setting up meeting, da 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 da, it's not gonna get us anywhere. That's my opinion. Okay, I I um, definitely agree with that, and I'm not suggesting to do one or the other. I'm suggesting to do both or all at the same time. So reaching out to the commissioner, reaching out to our elected officials, doing all that stuff all at once. So everything should be covered in terms of who we reach out to. Okay, Mr. Uh, Tate, you have a hand up there? Yeah, yes, I do. It's, it's in regarding the, what you said that you have to present uh, the the proposed letter to the other committee chairs. As a former uh, as a former chair of various committees over the years, I don't think you have to present it. The the only person that has to to approve the letter is the chair of the board. You don't have to wait uh, till you have uh, like your monthly meeting with the committee, you know, with, with the executive board. 
I disagree with that. I think you, we come up with a letter, you present it uh, for approval to the chair of the board. I mean, if it's, if once it's said, okay, you could send it out. Okay. Technically, that's why we have different committee. Each committee chair represent that committee and those what the committee uh, agrees to. So for a letter that you don't have to bring it to wait a month to present it to the executive board. You draft up the letter, let them type it up, and uh, for it to go out in the letterhead, yes, it has to be approved by the by the chair of the board. That's about it. Okay, I definitely uh, agree with that. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I, I, I wasn't clear when I said what I said before. I really was no. referring to the to the um the the, the chair mm -hmm. of the board. Um, even though I didn't say that specifically, that, that is what I was referring to. And, um, you mm -hmm. know, you're right. You're right. Definitely. I wasn't planning to wait a month to do that. I was going to look into that tomorrow. Thank um, you. Yeah, so, I just wanted to clarify, you know, I know this is your first year as the chair. Yeah. But so I just wanted yeah. to let you know. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So I'm, I'm hoping, um, everyone understands exactly what I was referring to now. Like that is what I've was referring to doing. I wasn't going to wait till next month. Um, was was there anything else specifically that anyone wanted to bring to the attention of the meeting tonight? Okay. All right. So, just to um, go over what we discussed tomorrow, I'm going to reach out to the chair for the board. I'm going to talk of, talk to him about what we discussed here, what we'd like to do, who we would like to reach out to, and get that letter put together, get it sent out, and the idea is to definitely have a. I mean. I would love to have a response by Wednesday, you know, um, but obviously who knows when they're going to actually respond. Um, but that is the idea at this point. But whether it's Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, I will definitely um, get that work in progress and let you guys know what's going on. Um As I've said, I definitely, um, you know, agree with everybody in the frustration, and I really do want to get this stuff corrected. I um, and I, I hope, I hope this, uh, I hope this works. I hope this works. Uh, I know nobody actually really wants to have to go, and go out of your way and have to do something like that, you know, I, I totally get it. Um, but I just don't think we should, you know, completely disregard that option because it may be necessary at some point in the future, depending on how these things go. But hopefully it won't have to go there and this will be enough. Okay. Um, well, um, if there's nothing further, I don't want to just keep you guys here for no specific reason. Um, I guess we should do roll call. Good evening, Leonie Logan, committee member. You. Hazel Martinez, committee member. Thank you. State <laughs> committee member. Thank you. Monica McCain Brown, committee member. 
Thank you. Simone Sylvester, community, uh, committee member. Lydia Karen Robinson, committee member. Vanessa Kwashi, committee member. Thank you. All right. I think that's committee it. member. Okay. I believe that, is that, that, that that's everyone. Um, I just want to say that, like I've said before, you know, when you guys were sending me the information regarding the things that you were seeing in your day-to-day -day travels, you know, if you could, if you do see those things in the the following days, if you could just, if you have the time to just take a quick snapshot and just send it to the email um, with the streets, um, you know, just to keep the documentation of these things, just keep it concise and keep it together. And it'll definitely be helpful, you know, when we present all of these issues because it's one thing to tell these people it's another thing to show them you know so um if you're able to do that that'd be really helpful i really appreciate it um mr tate you have a hand up no i'm sorry that's on before i i, I lower it Okay. Oh, so this is Hazel Martinez again. I want to know: Have you done looked into these um, installation of DP installation of these bio swales in our community because there seem to be an an, or, uh, an inordinate amount of them, and not where people complain of flooding. I'd be curious to know if there was. And if anyone saw any resolution to their flooded basements from these things. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's part of this committee. Yeah, that's a good question, especially after this storm. Right. We're going to have to follow up looking into how useful those things have been. Um, but yeah, we'll have to look into that to get an answer to that. Um, was there any? Yeah, I, I could piggyback on that. Um, yep. th this morning, the, 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 um, I was I was driving down uh, Foster Avenue. Just about every corner was flooded. I know it was heavy rain, but uh, <laughs> uh, from East Forty Third all the way down until we got to Nordstrom Avenue, even past Nordstrom, which is not over. It was. Just about every corner was flooded, so I don't know the the drains there in the system what what's happening, but uh, it uh, I see a lot more flood that I have a flooded area that I have seen in the past. Not not saying it's because of these things that they did, but I definitely noticed like uh, the uh, my wife was driving and she was driving through puddles of water. Okay and. Uh, I have never seen, I've seen heavier rain than this, and I have never seen it like this. And I have to agree. Um, the storm that they called it, I didn't find it to be that severe, you know, and to have that kind of flooding, it just rained. You know, that's definitely um, very strange. Um, this is Leonie Logan. One of the problems is is in the way they have pitched some of these streets. Uh, there's a problem at on Glenwood Road between East 40 and Albany that was reported to the community board as well and is being looked into. It has been referred. And the reason is in terms of because that stretch on Glenwood Road was recently repitched not pitched going towards the drain so whenever it rains right at the bus stop there the b6 in front of the pizza store and the liquor store it is completely flooded. and 
something that has been brought to the attention of um, the the agency. That's another issue. In, it's in terms of they pitch the streets when they are repaid. Yes, again, I'm piggybacking uh, Ms. Logan, because that's, I reported that, uh, and Ms. Rachel told me that uh, they came and they look at it, but this is like two months now, because uh, I personally, I was coming from the, uh, the what's it? we are in December, we're going in, in October, because I, I was going from the October, uh, six to seven basin community council meeting and I took the bus. I got off the bus and I had to step in that water. And then when I went to the corner, thanks God there was no no car turning around because I slipped on that right red thing that they put there and I tumbled into the street. I still have the mark on my on my knee from where I scratched my knee, but I tumbled and I hurt myself. Uh, and I reported it, and it's still there. Uh, even even when it doesn't rain, it's, st it's still there. So I don't know what's going on, but I keep reporting it, and I'm glad you reported it too. Someone is going to have uh, a real serious accident over there getting off the bus. That they cannot get off the bus without stepping in the water. Yes, Mr. Tate, it's just unfortunate that they have to be reactive instead of proactive. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely true. They just sit there and they wait. Sit there and they wait. Well, hopefully we'll get that meeting and um, we can get all these grievances aired out. I mean, it's, it's it's sad to say that <laughs> this is uh this is where we are. Um, did anyone else have anything else to add that they're aware of? Um, so once again, like I said, especially in regards to those situations, the floods, the flooding zones, especially if it's not raining and it's flooding, if you could just take a picture of that and just send it over with the um, exact streets. Um, there had been some mix up before with some street cleaning that was sent, but um, the, the streets that were given um, didn't narrow down the area properly and they weren't able to address the issue. So if we could just get the exact location, the intersections and all that stuff with that information, you know, it'd be really helpful. So, um, I guess at this point, um, we could adjourn the meeting if there's nothing further. Okay, this is Leonie Logan. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.24 p.m. Martinez, second. All right, the meeting is adjourned. Appreciate everyone coming through and um, participating and all of your help, and um, I'm going to look into all those things that we discussed and um, hopefully get some results. Good night, everyone. Have a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank Merry you Christmas. Everyone. Thank you.